What is going on, everybody? It is your favorite dating coach, Elias Scott, and as you can see by the title below, we're going to talk about the ultimate guide on ignoring men. I have slides here, um, but I'm listen to more what I say than what I have written because I am going to go into detail uh, on a lot of these things. And I decided to do this and to make this presentation because a lot of people, and I'm making a lot more, so make sure you subscribe and click that red button below. I'm going to make a bunch of these where I go a little more into detail on some concepts because a lot of women will come to me you know, clients calling me and we're talking and I understand a lot of them, believe it or not, they say they watch all my videos, but they don't understand my fundamentals. They don't understand context and desirability and why certain things work and don't work and assets and liability. They don't, they don't understand my concepts as much as y'all think y'all do. Okay. So if that's the case, then please make sure to check out my course, Attraction Academy, links down below. I go really into detail on that, but if not, then just watch these. I'm going to go into a little more detail than usual with videos. Um, so you get a good foundation or fundamental to build your relationship, your house, whatever analogy you want to use um, to build it on. Okay, so jumping right into this, uh, the ultimate guide on ignoring men. First off, I want to tell women this, and this is something you have to have in your mind that you might not accept, but it's reality. So you should accept it anyway. It's, I mean, it's not even me saying this. This is logic. Um, you are not entitled to a man's resources, right? So because you're not entitled to them, a man has to choose to give them to you. Just because you like him is not enough. Just because he likes you is not enough. If you're going to give your resources right up freely, so for example, you know, women will come to me and they and they wonder why this guy's treating her like shit, but she's so abundant. She's so accessible. She's so, I'm not saying be a bitch. Do not be a bitch. Do not play hard to get none of that shit. Don't do that. But if you're going to give it up on day one and you don't even know his last name and you're going to, you know, uh, uh, uh just be, just blow up his, like just make yourself so accessible and give up your resources. Then of course the guy's not going to give them up or, you know, he's not going to invest in you. There's no reason for him to. From an advantageous standpoint, there's no reason for him to invest them in you. So what I'm saying here is you are not entitled to his resources. He must choose to give them to you, right? And when he chooses to give them to you, that's where you now are both agreeing into the courtship and he has to court you to, to get your resources, okay? Because he's not, he's not entitled to yours either. He's not, just because he likes you doesn't mean he has to have sex with you. Just because he likes you doesn't mean you have to marry him. Just because you like him doesn't mean you have to go out or he likes you doesn't mean you have to go out on a date with him. He has to prove these things to you, okay? Um, that's the way it works. Uh, and, the, and, if, and if men are watching this, they're like, well, that's stupid. Why? It's, it's just because of the evolutionary psychology. If you look at the investment theories and all that type of stuff, um, the sex that has to invest more into a kin or an offspring um, tends to be the more choosier one. Why? Because she has a higher investment, a higher risk, um, things like that. And that's just evolution, courtship, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's why men, if you really want some sugar walls, uh, you have one or two options. You can actually invest in a woman in a relationship long term um, or see at least where it goes. Or you can just go for a really, really easy person who doesn't, who's just like, okay, I don't care. Let's just hook up. So women, you raise your value to an extent and you raise some self-respect by holding out. I'm not saying hold out. I'm not saying be a bitch. If you want to hang out on a, or if you want to hook up with the guy day one, go ahead and do so. Um, but you, you see, you see the quote I, I have right here. Okay, so it, it might be uh, you're not entitled to his resources. He's not entitled to yours. You guys both have to work towards him. So, what is my definition of ignoring? Uh, a lot of people want to know what, like, what is actual ignor ignoring. Um, because they would hear things from other dating coaches, such as waiting for two weeks or theory on waiting for two weeks. Um, another theory. Wait a month and come back around, write him a letter, all this shit. No. Let me tell you first off why that doesn't work. Nothing says you're my bitch, I have you more than anything, right? Like I have you wrapped around my finger than a woman who will leave for a month trying to trying to put on this mask of I'm a high value bitch. Um, sorry for calling you that, but like I'm a high value woman and all of a sudden she you know she does it for a month and then she comes back around that just means i have you and if you do that there's absolutely no reason for me to to invest in you okay there's absolutely no reason for me to invest in you why would i i have you you just proved it to me because for the last month i didn't do shit in chase in terms of chasing you and you came back around either because you're insecure you have a lack of options you just can't get over me or, or you just really, really, really like me. 
And I know that based on your actions. So ladies, if you're pulling away this whole ignoring thing, as I have right here, you got to do it 100%, okay? 100%, as if you're never going to hear from the guy again. Now, if he initiates, you have to be on a different conscious than 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 previous than you previously were before pulling away. Because if he pulls this bullshit again and and, and and comes back around and says, hey, I'm sorry, right, and you let him back in, there is no consequence to his actions. He knows he has access to you. And here's an important concept to understand, women. There's two types of access. There's the woman, there's the, the direct, which is, well, I'm gonna pull away and not talk to him for a month or a week or whatever. So you, okay, you don't talk for a week, but then there's the second type, which is what, what a lot of men think, which is, well, even though she's not talking to me, I know where she's at. I know she likes me, and I know if I can have her, all I have to do is reach out. It's that type of accessibility. It's like, well, no, I don't want McDonald's. I want to eat really healthy, but if I if, I, if it comes down to and I really want McDonald's, I know where it's at. It's right there around the corner. And all I have to do is drive over there and get it. And, and they're going you know, to serve me, right? So th there's the two types of accessibility. There's, actually, there's the one where women ignore a guy. Uh, I'm going to ignore you for X amount of days or weeks. And then there's the, there's the one where a guy thinks, well, even if you do that, I, 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 I know you like me. All I have to do is just reach out and, and beg a little bit and I'm back in. Okay, so... Your job with ignoring a guy is to change those dynamics. Ignore the guy. You know, actually take time to ignore the guy. But if, if he initiates, you can't just be gung-ho about it. You can't just be like, okay, he says sorry. My whole thing with it is a guy has to put a little more effort to get back into, into it. And I'm a big believer that the guy should and have to say um, – Something along the lines of, hey, I made this mistake, I'm sorry, um, I want X, Y, Z, right? Like, just some clarity. So, you both verbally hear each other saying, uh, or, or you, you just hear each other say, okay, you know what? I, I, he said he's sorry, he said this is why, he said what he did wrong, and this is what he wants. Okay, so I heard you say that, dude, so this is the new context. This is the new negotiation. This is the contract you're signing on for, and you're coming back. So, I can only assume you want these things. Otherwise, why would you come back, Okay. So, go, from there, I tell women, only ignore a guy if he's actually disrespecting your standards. Only ignore a guy, if, and again, you have to make these standards clear, you have to make it precise, realistic, and he has to fall short more than, or may, I'll say twice. If you let him keep falling short, then he's just going to uh, take advantage of you and not learn anything from the process, okay? There's no consequence to his actions. He's going to keep doing what he's doing. A lot of women, for some reason, desire a man so much that they lower their standards and they wonder why they're in the situation they're in and they blame the guy. No. If there's a beware of dog sign, okay, you see the sign and you'll walk past it a couple times on your way, on your walk or to school or work or whatever. And one time you're like, you know what? The dog looks really cute. It's not going to bite me. I'm gonna, let me put my hand over and, and pet it. And the dog tears your hand up. Well, that's on you. You'll see the sign. And, and, you know, and if the sign's still up, don't think the dog's going to change. If the sign's up and it says, beware of dog, don't put your hand over it, okay? Same thing here, ladies. If you think he's going to change, um, if you're holding out on hope, you're just conditioning the guy to keep doing what he's doing. There is no difference. So what do I mean by realistic standards? Listen, ladies. Real, there's there's your standards and there's realistic standards. Your standards aren't, I mean, they're important, don't get me wrong. But if you're one of those women who are like, I need to hear from you every day, oh, I'm not, well, then I'm ignoring you. Get the F out of here. You're not, that's not going to happen. If you're one of these women who need to see a guy X amount, you know, three or four times a week, every week, um, and you don't get that, get, get out of here. That's not going to happen. Okay? If you're one of these girls who think he's never going to cancel on you and then he cancels on you and you freak out and you want to ignore him, get out of here. There's going to be a cancel. That's just human nature. People have lives. People have work. People have children. People have cases, you know, emergencies. It's going to happen. I tell women you have to look at it in terms of layers, meaning there's nothing wrong with a guy, you know, um, uh, not, there's nothing wrong with you not hearing from a guy every day. 
okay? But if it's consistently happen happening, so that's the layer there. If it's consistently happen happening, then you need to say something, right? You know, and you want to argue communication. You want to say, hey, I, I don't have to hear from you every day, but I'm not okay with going with those gaps, right? Like, again, you, I don't have to hear from you every day. I know you're a busy guy. You told me you're a busy man. You're going through a lot, but it's not cool to, to talk to me and then not hear from you three or four or five days and then you talk to me again. That That's where you need to say your standard, okay? So it's things like that. Or if a guy cancels on you, and then uh, at the same time while he's canceling, he's just acting a little distant. And then on top of that, he's not texting as much. Then, okay, now it's layering. That's where you need to say something, okay? So that's what I mean by realistic. That's not realistic on his end. Like if a guy is canceling, and he's pulling away, and he's not texting as much, okay, then you need to say something because this guy is just bullshitting you, and he, and he needs to be held accountable. Or there at least needs to be some type of communication. You know, at the same time, if a guy is... Um, is, is reaching out once in a while, that's not okay. You can go a day or two without hearing from him, but if it's happening consistently over and over and over and over again, and he's gone and you have you don't hear from him, like where the hell does he go? And then out of nowhere he comes back again, that's not okay. So think of it in terms of layers. But again, you have to be realistic and you should only give him two chances. Meaning, okay, you bring it up once, he says, okay, I understand, sorry, my bad. He will say later on, he starts doing it again. You're like, hey, dude, I thought you said you were going to fix it. Like, what's going on? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just busy. But, but, okay, then you need to tell him, okay, well, can, can you step it up? Don't say it like this. But you need to tell him, hey, dude, can you kind of step it up? You said you were going to do it. You, 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 you did for a while, but now, like, what's going on? Like, can, and the reason I'm telling women to only do it twice because if you, or only give them two chances because if you give them more, he's going to take advantage of you. If you, if you, if you, if you just say, if you just give him one, that's not enough because it might be miscommunication. He might not know what's like a lot of guys don't know what they're doing wrong, right? And you kind of need to call him out on it a couple times. And if he keeps on falling back, then maybe you maybe you guys just aren't the same type of compatibility. Like a lot of women like texting. I'm not much of a texter, right? And if I keep on falling back, I'm okay, we're just not compatible then. So you got to take that into consideration. So, reasons to not ignore a guy, okay? Your ego and pride, you're not a kid. If Don't use your ego and pride to ignore a guy. That's stupid. To regain power, that does not work. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why. To get him back, that does not work. To show him what he did wrong, that is not going to work. Well, I mean, that, that one can work. That one can work, actually, a little bit. To hurt him or get, get him to regret what he did, eh, again, can kind of work. Or, or anything passive-aggressive, don't. Now, why do I have a lot of these up here? Because you are going to fall short if you're trying to get a guy back or regain power or anything like that. Because you are doing it with a mission or outcome in mind. Okay? And if you're ignoring a guy, he obviously did... If, if we go back to what I said over here, right here, right? He obviously did something wrong more than once. And he's not willing to fix it. He's not willing to fix it. Okay? Um... But you're wanting him to fix it. And he's not willing to fix it either because he doesn't care. There's a lack of attraction. Someone else in the picture. Um, he's just an idiot. He, he's, he's bad communicate. Whatever. It, it's a lack of something. Okay? And if you're hoping to regain this power or to get him back or to show him what he did wrong, um, and then you start ignoring him, you're looking for an outcome, meaning you are wanting to hear from him. You are wanting him to come back. You are wanting blah, blah. You get what I'm saying? And if you're wanting that from a guy who's really not sure where he stands with you or really knows what he wants or he's taking you for granted or something like that, you're going to lose this negotiation because you care about the outcome. He doesn't, which is why he's doing what he's doing in the first place. And you doing this is you investing in the guy to an extent in hopes of the change of the outcome and it's going to bite you in the ass in the long run. So you only ignore a guy out of self-respect. Only ignore a guy because you have uh, you have standards, okay? And your standards have not been met. You warned them a couple times nicely. You, you weren't a bitch about it, um, but he's still doing what he's doing, okay? So depending on where you uh, what, where you guys are and what you two want, you could commute... Uh, 
you can demand certain things when a guy comes back. Okay, so it could be something as simple as you just wanting more consistency and, 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 and better communication. It's like, dude, you know, I don't have to hear from you every day, but you can't go a week without talking to me. Like, come on, dude. Or it could be something a little more complex, such as asking for the relationship. Um, or again, it could just be something in the middle, so just general, general things. But either way, you have to kind of demand something if the guy comes back. And if the guy comes back, he has to invest more. I think he has to say, hey, you know what? I'm sorry. I did X, Y, Z wrong, and I, I want to fix it because I want this. Something along the lines like that, which is why I put this here at the bottom. If you do not get these things, you must pull away, okay? You have to think of the re-engagement as a as a new terms of negotiation. If a guy pulls away, he is you guys are terminating the contract. If he comes back in, it's a renegotiation of the contract. And if he does not follow it, then someone is eliminated. And if you do not get these things, then he needs to pull or you need to pull away 100%. And now, if he comes back, if he comes back, okay? And I'm going to get on those. If he comes back and he does not give you what you want or he bullshits you, he is done 100%. I don't care if he comes back with a ring. He is done. So you're going to give him two chances before you ignore him. And then if, if you ignore him and he comes back, okay, cool. I'll give you that chance because you said you were wrong and this is this and this, blah, blah, blah. If he pulls the bullshit again, done. 100%, no chances, no ne negotiation. Why would you rehire, I guess you can think of it like that. Why would you rehire a guy under these circumstances? He's obviously an idiot. It's not working out. So a lot of common questions I get on this kind of stuff, and I kind of answered them, is I ignore him and he comes back. What do I do from here? I kind of just mentioned that. If he comes back, he has to do more um, uh, to, to, to get back in. I, again, so you give him the two warnings. He fails, he uh, you ignore him, and then he comes back begging to be back. Well, he needs to do a little more because he just can't come right back in. You just can't you just can't leave line and then come back and get your place back in line. No, 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 no. You either got to start back from the beginning, dude, or you got to convince the person in line, hey, I had to leave because of X, Y. He has to give you some good reasons and explain that he was in the wrong. And again, I, I, I know men are watching this. They're like, That's, this is effing stupid shit. No, it's not. Dude, you're only in the if the guy's watching this, you're only in this situation because you're a bad communicator and you're a BSer, right? The woman, like, as I'm telling women right now, they need to have realistic standards. I'm not telling her, I'm not telling you, uh, you know, these women that they need to tell you to hear from them every. No, you don't have to hear from a guy every day, but there need to be realistic standards. And if a girl, if a guy is not willing to uphold these, same as same as you and him, right? It's all negotiation. If you don't get that, then someone needs to walk away. But as as the question says here, uh. What do I do from here? If he pulls away, sorry, not pulls away. If you if you uh, if you ignore him and he comes back, okay, he needs to do a little more. He needs to say what he's in the wrong, and then you guys can go from there. So next one would be I ignore him, he comes back, but starts up the crap again. Now what? I already answered that. He's out, done, 100%, never coming back around. What if I ignore him but I never hear from him again? Then congratulations, I saved you a lot of time. When I tell him when I tell him what is wrong, he tries to change and does good for the most part. Then he falls back into the same pattern. Where do I go from here? Um, you, as I said earlier, you guys just might not be compatible. You're not. There's no compatibility there. Then, like I said, a, a lot of women like you know like texters. I'm not a texter, so uh, it's just not compatibility. It just it just is what it is. What do I say when he reaches out to me? You got to demand your standards. Okay. You have to demand those standards and say, you, what do you want? Why you reach now? And then he needs to kind of say why. And then you say, well, I mean, I kind of gave you a bunch. I mean, you kind of have to have him admit that he was in the wrong is what I would do. And I know that sounds childish, but I mean, you have to both consciously and ver or you have to hear him verbally or verbally say that he was in the wrong. He, you ha he has to know he's in the wrong and you have to know that he knows he's in the wrong or this just going to keep on happening. So I would try to dig something like that out. And then you can go back to what you guys were. One time. One effing time, okay? Give the guy the benefit of the doubt if you want. You don't have to. So with that being said, ladies, uh, there you go. I am writing a – I am going to be writing a more intensive guide, like blog article on the topic, very, uh, at least 4,000 words, 10-plus um, pages. And that's going to be on my um, – 
website in the next couple days so make sure to check that out but if you like this let me know leave it in the comments it would mean a lot to me i actually probably put a thing up here um ask it if you like these kind of formats because i can go more into detail on things so that being said ladies i love you take care and peace